help me welcome uh, Sean Spear and Rem Hoffman. And while we're doing that, um, uh, so if you guys both have your microphones yeah. on, yeah. you both are great. I just wanted to say, because um, Deborah helped remind me, there is a hashtag if you're tweeting about the event, which is hashtag NP data. Thanks. This is, uh, so it's going to be a little bit odd because there's two of us up here, so please bear with us. But um, what we want to talk about is really thinking about what is what is measuring performance, what is measuring impact really mean? And so I really what we're is it on? There you go. Oh, there we go. Technical difficulties. <laughs> The last Luddite in the technology consulting business. <laughs> okay, so we'll try that again. So really what we're trying to talk about is um, the, the, the topic of the, of the conference is really about uh, measuring performance and really understanding and measuring what matters. And you know, one of the things that we've done over the last 10 years, and really you know, this, this group, Right, so technology consultants and nonprofits working in technology or working with technology is um, over the last 10 years, we've really done a lot of work. We've gone from you know, sort of just managing paper all the way up to you know, sophisticated, sophisticated management information systems. But one of the things that, that one of the challenges that we are uh, proposing is that, or that we're, that we're saying exists out there is that we perhaps don't actually manage and measure what matters. And so I think that's one of the themes that we want to talk about uh, today. Um, in the interest of sort of full disclosure, I mean, we're definitely going to be talking about outcomes throughout this presentation. So let's go ahead and do the next slide. Um, actually, why don't you give it to me mm -hmm. for, for this thing. So um, first of all, in terms of introductions, my name is Rem Hoffman. I run a firm called Exponent Partners. Uh, we're based out of San Francisco. and we're for the last 10 years have been working in technology, as a matter of fact, uh, have been involved with N10 since uh, the founding ED and, and uh, uh, you know, since it was just a, an idea in this sector and have really been part of and really been, been honored to be part of this kind of evolution over time. But really what we do is we help organizations think about uh, building management information systems, performance management systems, and outcomes management systems, really thinking about how do you use technology to have that strong, equal voice in the conversation with government and with uh, the for-profit sector and with our constituents. Uh, and with me here is Sean Spear. Uh, so I'm out of San Francisco. Sean is out of our New York office. And uh, he's also been working in this environment with the, uh, the N10 community around uh, impact and, and uh, outcomes for, for many, many years. Um, so one of the things that often happens with maybe not often, but certainly in my presentations, is sometimes there's that, that reveal that comes down the road. And you know, so just to be very clear, we want to really sort of tell you what it is that we're going to talk about. So first of all, we think that social impact is the bottom line for the nonprofit sector. And we'll go into more detail about this. But the second is that there is an inexorable trend towards requiring demonstrable data uh, and proof of our, of our impact. And the challenge, I think, is that we as a sector lack the necessary infrastructure to actually make that happen, to really make that consistently happen. Um, so that's what we want to talk about today. And that's the, the challenge that we're positing, but also the, the thing that we're looking to, to, to provo provide a solution to. So let me just talk a little bit about this first point, right? So, you know, we've probably talked about this in our sector ad nauseum, right? The for-profit sector has a clear bottom line. It's easy to measure. It's profit. It's measured in dollars. There's a consistent denomination that we deal with. And 
In our sector, though, we have all of this conversation about double bottom lines and triple bottom lines and how do we turn triple bottom lines into SROI and, and all those kinds of issues. But I think that's a false, it's a false kind of lens to look at this through. The truth is that we as a sector have only one bottom line. And the thing is that it is social impact. And that actually brings us sort of to the first problem, right? The first problem is that social impact is not a common kind of measurable thing like profit, right? There is not that one, that one kind of data point, that one common uh, way of measuring it. And, and that's, the, you know, that's, the, that's the big challenge that underlies everything that we as a sector do when it comes to data and measurable results. Um, we will posit that, and we do posit, that outcomes is actually the, that social currency, right? So that the currency of social impact. And, you know, everywhere you look in our sector, and this is not new, obviously, right? So we've all, uh, you know, to the extent that you read Stanford Social Innovation Review and you read about, uh, like, you know, Paul Bress's article recently about 10 years of outcome-focused philanthropy, you look at sort of the movement towards impact investing and, uh, and um, you know, the, the, this idea around uh, collective impact that's been put, you know, brought forth by the FSGs of the world. And there are all, you know, all of that requires uh, outcomes, measurement, and management. And if you run a nonprofit, then you have been dealing with this issue for many, many years that outcomes, that, that funders are demanding outcomes data, right? And so I think that most would agree that outcomes management is here to stay. We need to understand that. So, and we also have um, two sort of challenges that come along with that. So the first thing is that we as a sector, we talk about outcomes management, but really what we often measure is something entirely different, which is sort of, we, ha we measure outputs, we measure, um, you know, we measure the efficacy of our fundraising, we measure, measure uh, the return on our social media strategy, and those kinds of things. But it's very, very difficult to, um, uh, to measure outcomes per se. And um, so, so I think that's the, you know, that's the framework. The other, the other piece is that um, we don't, the way that we in the nonprofit sector traditionally have thought about measuring outcomes is through a mechanism called evaluation. And evaluation is this punctuated, you know, before and after uh, mechanism to tell us what our social impact is, but it doesn't give us as, and you, as people who are managing a, a nonprofit and trying to adapt to the, the realities of what you're doing and how you're, benefiting, how you're benefiting your constituents, it doesn't give you the real time kind of data and information to really make change, right? Um, there's an interesting quote that I'm, I'm not going to uh, give you verbatim, but it's uh, Brian Trellstedt, who we worked with at, uh, at Acumen Fund, who basically compares um, uh, evaluation to sort of a, an autopsy, right? And, but the gist of it is that it's, you know, too late, and it often, and it doesn't give you the, any kind of information to help make a change before it's too late, right? The quote is actually much better than that interpretation of it, so <laughs> trust me. Um, <coughs> So one of the things I want I to do is just talk about the, the, the technology, where we are right now. And uh, in, the, in the context of measuring outcomes. So as I mentioned or alluded to briefly earlier, you know, over the last 10 years, and, and you know, I mean, I've been involved in this space for at least 10 years, and you know, we've, we've definitely made this progression from um, paper to rudimentary data collection through spreadsheets and things like that and, and moving up into management information systems. And by that, what I mean is, you know, we're all dealing with CRM systems and fundraising systems and uh, financial management systems. Each of these are, min uh, are management information systems that help us improve the, the efficiency by which we collect data, do the work, and, and, and sort of you know, deal with the data that surrounds that. And it, so the, the, the improvements that we get there are around efficiency and uh, cost reduction 
and being able to gain some, to glean some information about that particular piece of work that we do, whether it's fundraising or finance or whatever, and report on that. So what we are positing, though, is that the next, the next step, of course, is around performance management, right? And so this is, performance management is then a necessary, you know, prerequisite to doing outcomes management. Performance management, in our view, is when you start to weld together the different management information systems in your organization, and you are able to really sort of learn from the data, which means that you've got to be able to do some sort of analytics and, and, and gain understanding of how you need to change as an organization to better reach your mission. That's when you're building performance management systems. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, we will acknowledge that right now, we're where this line is, right? We, we are, we've been building management information systems uh, and very sophisticated ones for many years. And, but we are not, as a sector, uh, at sort of the level of performance management yet. Um, and I think, you know, we've, you can actually sort of track this trend through, you know, the, the kinds of topics that come up at N10 conferences. And, and I think you'll see that we're still, you know, a lot of the conversations are still in, you know, sort of siloed in this, uh, in this area here. So one of the things, and, and beyond performance management systems, right, so performance management systems really tell you about uh, efficiency and they start to give you learning about how to manage your day-to-day -day work more effectively. There's a whole other step beyond that, which is outcomes management. That's what we want to talk about here today. Um, so this, everything on the right side of this line, I think is really what we're talking about for the next decade of work that all of you and we and N10 are going to have to embark on, right? That it's, it's how do we get to true measurable results that matter. Um, so with that, let me just give it to Sean to let him sort of give you an example of what, uh, what that means in real, in real terms. Um, so how many of you in the room have bought a cup of coffee at a coffee shop this week? Pretty much everyone, I would assume, most people. <coughs> if you're like me, you go into a coffee shop and you immediately start thinking, where was this coffee sourced? How were the workers that harvested this coffee treated? What are the environmental practices of the company where I'm buying this coffee, right? We have a whole litany of internal sort of moral values that we start rating the choices we make about our consumer products and our consumer services. What's amazing is I can go to the Starbucks website and there's a whole tab for responsibility. And I can go here and I can look up what are Starbucks environmental policies? What are their, how do they treat their workers? Where are they sourcing their coffee? Is it shade grown, yada, yada, right? There's a whole bunch of data that Starbucks is providing to us as consumers that we have asked for and we have demanded, right? The nonprofit sector has been really, really good about demanding from the corporate sector social impact, right? Starbucks bottom line is profit. The one thing they are committed to above all else is the dollar and making money. But we, as a people, have demanded from Starbucks and other companies like them that they show their social impact. And guess what? They're doing a really good job, right? Starbucks worked with Conservation International to develop a set of standards they call CAFE around all sorts of metrics that measure how well Starbucks is doing on their social responsibility. Right? And they've publicly stated their long-term goals towards these metrics. And every year, they release a report, a report that shows how they're performing towards those metrics. So I, as a consumer, have a pretty good idea. When I go buy a cup of coffee, I can compare different companies and see what their social impact is. And remember, this is a secondary importance in the business sector. Right? Their primary goal is to drive profit. Yeah, and I think one of, the, one of the interesting things is one of the reasons that they're able to do that is that the for-profit sector has this culture of performance management, right? So they build you know, systems that le let them have the analytics and the tools to help them think about this stuff. And they, you know, so they've basically leveraged that to very quickly respond to the nonprofit sector's kind of push to, to make that happen. And this is the result of this. And so, you know, I mean, how many, uh, how many sectors in our, you know, how many subsectors in our nonprofit sector do you, can you think of where you have, you know, transparency, publication around true 
outcomes uh, of that particular sector, of, of what is actually being achieved? And I think the, the answer, the, the answer is, is, is fairly few. Right. So um, the last couple of weeks have been pretty hard for me. I've been dealing with a complex family situation where it's become evident to us in the last year that one of our family members suffers from major depression as well as um, chronic alcoholism. So in the last two weeks, we've been looking for facilities for this person to put them into for detox and essentially clinical intervention. And so I've been researching uh, detox facilities in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, in Minnesota, and in North Carolina, and several other places. And you can go to their websites and you can see sort of how they do their interventions and how they do their treatments. And you can call them up and talk to them and they'll tell you how great their facilities are. And then when you ask them, well, how effective are your treatments? They have zero information. And more importantly, they have zero information about how effective they are versus the average, right? I'm about to commit to a $30,000 investment for one of my family members for one of the most critical experiences of their life. And I literally have no data on which to make that decision. And yet, when I go buy my cup of coffee in the morning, I have reams of data about this simple thing, this like little cup of coffee, right? As a sector, we have to do better about providing information to the people that we're providing services to, right? It is imperative that we know the work that we're doing, we know how well we're doing it, and we have a clear roadmap to do it better. And critical to that is the data that we collect and how we act upon that data. Okay, so that brings us to the question of um, how do we, how do we as the sort of the, the nonprofit technology sector think about this? And one of the things that that you know, as we've been doing this kind of work for many many years, we've come to this idea of an outcomes data framework, and um, and and that's what we want to really sort of walk through with you today is this idea of how do we get in a systematic way uh, to a point where we can talk about real results, real outcomes. The, the, the definition of outcomes is what is the change, the beneficial change that you have made through your work as a nonprofit, through your programs, to a beneficiary, your target audience, over time, right? And, you know, there are many, many other things that we measure as performance management, right? We measure our the efficacy of our uh, fundraising efforts and all of these different kinds of, I would argue, subsidiary metrics. But the thing we don't do is measure our actual outcomes of our mission. So, so what we want to do is present this kind of outcomes data framework. And we want to, as we're going through this, show you an example of where this plays out in, in, in real life and how this is, how this is becoming an emerging part of our entire technology landscape. Um, so uh, we, we, go straight from, we go straight from the nice placid lake to uh, the, the, the consultant wear kind of, kind of chart here. But bear with us. Um, so the, the thing that we, the, the point here is, and we're going to go through sort of each of these in more detail and sort of show you what this looks like in, in kind of uh, in, in real life, in, in nonprofits' actual experience. But the thing that we want to say is that there, there are sort of two blocks, right? One is uh, a single organization. A single organization has performance management systems. And that, well, that's sort of what we've talked about so far, right? It's, you know, you build up from, you know, paper data tracking to management information systems. And hopefully we are at the point where we are building performance management systems that give us the, the insight that we can learn from, our, from the work we do and apply that learning back to improving the way that we deliver service through our nonprofits. So, you know, usually what this means today is uh, being able to, to, to run reports and look at performance metrics and measure that over time. Um, a, th there's, a whole, there's a whole sort of management shift and a, and a thinking shift that has to happen in performance management where you have to shift your organization to a place where, you know, every single meeting that is a recurring meeting, you have some real-time data that you bring to that so that you can actually learn and, 
and have actionable change over time. Um, but that performance management system is key. But what we're saying is that that's not enough in our sector, right? In, a, in the for-profit sector, this is plenty, right? Because you're basically, you're doing performance management. You're, the key metrics are end up at the bottom line in dollars and dollars and KPIs and all that is, hand, is handled in here. But we need to do something different in our sector, which is we need to connect the work we do to the outcomes that we seek, right? And that connection is through two key concepts, logic models of how our programs are informed by research and evidence and how we say that if we do this today, then this is going to happen and then this is going to happen and this is the beneficial outcome that we're going to reach. So we need those logic models. And then as an organization, we need the theory of change that does the same thing at an organizational level. So we need to have uh, an outcomes management kind of framework that builds on top of and connects to the metrics that, uh, that, that run our day-to-day -day business. So I think this is what has to happen at an organizational level. We need to have performance management for efficiency and outcomes management for results. And I think that's the, this is the sort of the missing piece in, in, in many of our conversations about data today. The other thing is that um, when we start to communicate about our results, when we start to think about what actually works, one of the most common phrases in our sector is what works. I'm on the board of an organization that's called the Center for What Works. There are, uh, you know, there are many, many organizations that have a tagline that say what works. Uh, we're working with PolicyLink in, um, uh, in Oakland, you know, and they're looking at uh, equity and what works in equity. And so this is a common theme. But what works means prove that you are, that you are generating results in your work. And that's the piece that's missing. But, but in order to to bring that together at a sector level and to compare, you need to do things like benchmarking, right? You need to have similar organizations uh, bring their and aggregate their data together and so that you can be able to compare yourself against some benchmark so that you can improve. Now, the danger here, of course, and, and probably you know, what many people will think right off the bat is this can be a punitive thing, right? You know, it's like, well, if you're not meeting the benchmark, then clearly we're not going to fund you, you know, that kind of thing. But, but really, the imperative here is to drive learning. And, um, and then at, a, at the next level up, at the sector level, we need to have kind of outcomes knowledge, really the understanding of how are we setting our definitions of outcomes, of the indicators, how are we setting sort of the standards that we are going to work towards, and how are those based on the evidence. And so there's a whole knowledge management kind of infrastructure that needs to happen. So, that being said, let's talk a little bit about the example that we're going to um, that we're going to interweave into this, and we'll and we'll sort of jump in. Cool. It's just this one slide. Yeah. So Cornerstone Partnership is a client of ours, and they are basically focused on affordable home ownership, and they're a peer network of organizations working towards affordable home ownership. Um, and what they do is each individual organization within the network provides low cost loan to low-income people to get them into housing. And the theory here is that if you give someone a home, you provide a, a vehicle for wealth generation, you provide stability, and there's a whole list of sort of second-order effects that come out of having those two things, right, and having a home that you, you have for your family. So Cornerstone Partnership convenes and is continuing to bring people into this network to create a, a data or an outcomes data ecosystem where all of these participants are working together to collect the data, to do the benchmarking, and look at the outcomes for all of their programs together. Yeah, so this is a national, it's a national partnership. They were funded by the Ford Foundation to basically build this coalition that, that, is, that is setting the benchmarks. But, um, uh, and one of the interesting things is they are, a, a social innovation fund grantee, which implies, which is you know the government program that basically says we're going to go out and find good evidence-based uh, practices and programs, and we're going to try to replicate and fund those. Right. So SIF grantees are ones that have demonstrated to this government loan program or fund pro uh, grant program that they are evidence-based and that they actually can show results that are measurable over time. Right. Outcomes. And uh, so they're a SIF grantee, they're funded by the Ford Foundation, and you know, there are literally hundreds of these organizations. These are, typically, it's community land trusts that are the individual organizations, 
And that's what Cornerstone Partnership is aggregating. So let's talk a little bit about what the, the systems uh, view of this is. Right. Um, so at, at, at sort of the network level, on the bottom here, you've got individual organizations that are doing the actual loans, right? These are the organizations on the ground providing uh, financial aid to these people to get them into homes. So they're tracking things like applications, they're tracking their loans, all the financial information about each individual client. Um, they're tracking some of the outcomes for those sorts of things, right? So it's, it's their personal organization's information management system about affordable home ownership and everything that that organization needs to do to manage their program, right? And each one of these organizations, basically a cornerstone partnership developed a Salesforce application that they offer to each of these organizations. So each one of them has a system that they're managing this in. Cornerstone Partnership then runs its own Salesforce instance, which is the sector aggregator. And so automatically data is being pushed from each of these individual organizations to that data aggregator. And this allows Cornerstone Partnership to get a complete view of what's happening in their sector. And then on regular intervals, they provide benchmarking reports to each of the individual organizations. So each individual organization can see not only their performance, but they can see how they're performing against the other people in their cohort. At the same time, Cornerstone <laughs> also has their knowledge management system. Um, they're currently doing it in a variety of systems. So for example, they have a WordPress site where they have a lot of their evidence and their research and sort of the discussions going on about uh, the, the, the various home ownership programs. Um, they're using Zendesk to basically provide technical assistance for the people that are using the software. Um, they're providing, uh, within Salesforce, they've got a variety of sort of um, assessment tools. Assessment tools, yeah. Yeah, yeah all, all sorts of, you know, because they're, they're basically managing a coalition of hundreds of these community land trusts and other loan making organizations that are trying to, to basically give low or, or, or get uh, families that normally could not afford a home basically out of, out of, uh, into homes that are, that have been re, uh, rehabbed in, um, in the community. So, so let's talk about, you know, what this looks like against our, um, our outcomes data framework model, right? So, um, so at, at the, at the base level, the performance management system, um, is really about, you know, we've talked about that. It's the management information system. This is how you're basically creating uh, efficiency within your organization. You're managing in the, in sort of the lingo of outcomes management, management, you're managing inputs, activities, and outputs. That's the actual work that you do, the work that we do. And you're, you know, this is all about performance indicators and um, being able to learn from the work you do and do it more efficiently and understand that. So, so in the cornerstone example, right, this is collecting the loan information. It's dealing with your clients, your clients' information, their financial information. It's all sort of the data collection and tracking that you do in your day-to-day -day work. The next layer uh, around outcomes management, at this point what you're doing is you're integrating your theory of change and your logic model into your information systems and allowing you to basically see the, the results of your work and how that ties into, your, into the, the outcomes to your beneficiaries in real time. This, the, the real issue here is that um, we've gotten to the point with management information systems where we use a technology and in the, in the using of it, we are creating the data that we need for all of the upstream kind of work. And the problem that we have in the nonprofit sector right now is that there's a barrier right here, and anything that has to be done around reporting and analyzing around outcomes almost invariably ends up export to Excel, develop a pivot table, then dump it into a PowerPoint, create a chart, then create a dashboard, and then send it to 17 different funders in different slicing and dicing, and that is for FTE in a large organization, and it's and it's basically the executive director staying up, you know, <laughs> all over the weekend to, to 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 do that in a small organization, and that is a major problem. It's that connection of metrics that you're managing efficiently with information systems, 
and tying that into an outcomes management system. So in, so in Cornerstone, they have about 100 metrics that they've identified for their network, and they can generate those outcomes metrics using the data that they collect as part of the performance management system, right? So the same data that they collect on their day-to-day -day work is in the system generating the outcomes metrics automatically. They don't have to rekey anything. They're not redoing equations. They're not redoing pivot tables. The outcomes management system itself is figuring out the outcomes they want to track based on the data they've already entered. Okay. Um, one, one way that we in our work have, have addressed this is that you know, we, we work on the Salesforce platform, and so I, everything is, we, we basically have all of these in one platform. I think there are many, many different ways to solve that problem technologically, but, um, but the key is that you have to have integration at this level and, and analytics, and you've got to have your metrics tie into your kind of theory of change and logic models and indicators, defined indicators and defined outcomes. Um, so, so all of this is happening at the, at the organizational level. And with the Cornerstone Partnership, there are, you know, there are literally hundreds of these organizations that are doing this kind of work all across the country. But now what ha what's happening is aggregation. So we need to have, in, our sec in each of our subsectors, and our subsectors can be program-based, right? So it could be uh, children, youth, and family kind of programs. It could be funder-based, right? So we work with cohorts that are you know, a funder cohort, and they want to know what the, the aggregation is of data across that cohort. Um, and it could be, and it, there are a number of different kind of types of cohorts or subsectors that need to do outcomes ag aggregation. Um, but the important thing here is that, you know, we need to aggregate the data based on real common definitions of indicators and outcomes. We need to uh, allow the benchmarking of each individual organization being able to compare themselves against certain benchmarks and be able to then learn from that. And then, you know, this is also where we need to have those definitions of indicators and outcomes. Um, and so let's talk about what, how that works in, uh, in Homekeeper. Yeah, so, so it's important that, I, I think the last point that Rem made is really important, that the aggregator, as well as just aggregating the data, it houses the common metrics that the organizations use, right? So if I'm a new organization joining this cohort or network, I can connect to this system and it's gonna have the commonly used metrics available to me to then use in my outcomes management system. Um, so, I mean, we've covered this, right? Cornerstone is basically aggregating all of the data from all of their cohort and providing regular benchmarking reports to the entire network. And so in practice, uh, what this looks like is, so Cornerstone is that sector-making organization and they have their own instance of Salesforce, but what's happening is that there's, this is, the, the, the communication, the 100 metrics for one organization are being automatically uh, flowed up into this aggregation system. So, you know, we built this middleware kind of tool and I'm sure there are gonna be other conversations here and in Minneapolis or in, at N10 around integration and data integration and how we, we make all that work. But um, the interesting thing here is that we basically, you know, it's, uh, it's fully automated, right? So we're not talking about you know, ED staying up over the weekend managing pivot tables. It's, um, it is a regularly scheduled process where these 100 metrics, the definitions from here are baked into here and that, that upload happens on an automated basis and the sector, as sort of instantiated up here, understands what the results of the work are, not just in one organization, but across 100 organizations. And then the, you know, the very, sort of the apex of this again, just to, you know, is somewhere you've got to make the decisions about what those hundred indicators and outcome metrics are and what the targets are. And it has to be informed if we want to be sort of um, true to the idea that we want to have our work matter and generate results, it has to be informed by, you know, evidence, research, proof that we that, that that our theory of change is valid and all that. So what's happening is that 
across this sector, they basically, they had a starting point, they convened, you know, a uh, hundred of these organizations and, and they started to look at what is the core data set that we really need to report on, what does the evidence tell us in terms of research about what programs work, and let's use that as a starting point. But you still have to, you have to convene the experts in this knowledge management system so that they can evolve these standards over time. Next year, there's going to be all those hundred metrics, plus there'll be ten more because uh, some other funder has said, you know, this research study indicates that these 10 indicators are valid and give us additional information, so let's add them to, the, to, the, uh, to what, we're, what we're tracking. And so that's gonna grow and evolve over time, and you need this kind of a knowledge base and collaboration platform to keep our outcome standards, uh, outcome right. metrics. And, it, and it's important that at this yeah. level, it be extremely transparent, right? This needs to be almost a public forum, if it can be, where people can look at the the conversations that are happening around these metrics. They can look at the research, they can read the evidence, and have a debate, right? The whole point of this ecosystem is that we need to get to having real results. And we're not gonna get there by assuming that someone else has the answers. We all have the answers. And we need to have a common place where we can come together and have real valid discussions about the results and the outcomes that we wanna track. And the more we can be transparent and collaborative on that, the better this is going to be. And that, so this is an imperative part of the ecosystem, right? We need to have a central location where people can have these conversations openly and with integrity. Okay, so, uh, so this is the model that we've laid out. This is an example with Cornerstone Partnership of how one ecosystem, one a, a data ecosystem can support a sector or a subsector. And we have hundreds of these. And, you know, I think honestly what we're saying, uh, you know, first of all, we don't need to go over all this again. What we want to do is probably just say that this, this, is rep this represents the way to, or it's certainly a way, and it's one that we're proposing is a, a, a valid model for other sectors and subsectors um, of getting to real results. When we talk about results, we're not talking about you know, efficiency or effectiveness of some particular part of a nonprofit, but the core reason for being. You know, this, our, the results we're talking about are outcomes. And uh, so Cornerstone Partnership is one, uh, one example of that. Um, the, the point, though, is that these, and there's a, there's, a, there's a number of other places that we see this happening. But I think that these are really the exceptions that sort of prove the rule, which is that we as a sector are not doing this in a systematic way. And so we think that it's the mission of, you know, all of the folks that are part of the N10 community, which really has only, you know, been in existence for the last 10 years or so, um, to really move this forward. And it's also all of us in the, uh, all of our imperative in the nonprofit sector who are to, to demand and drive this. Um, there, I mean, there are other examples of this, right? So we've got Homekeeper. You know, if you think about Harlem Children's Zone, um, they do this very well, right? So they have hundreds of organizations, and they all have a common set of metrics, and they do data aggregation and reporting, and they've, and they've basically built the knowledge set around that. And the interesting thing there is that has now become the blueprint for um, the federal program called Promise Neighborhoods, where they're trying to replicate that, right? And, but it's, it's based on this idea of, a, of a, a data ecosystem that allows you to understand that the work that you do leads to, leads to actual results for the constituents, not for our fundraisers, not for our, you know, our funders, for that matter. Um, Acumen Fund, we, we did a similar kind of program uh, uh, in working with social entrepreneurs and international development. There's a whole standard called IRIS that is that kind of knowledge base at the top. Um, and, and uh, uh, systems to aggregate that data across a number of organizations. A good example of a, a funder-based collaborative, uh, out in my neck of the woods, Marin Community Foundation has something called the Thriving Families Network. It's a network of a bunch of um, uh, human services organizations throughout Marin County, each of which have a particular uh, program that reports its data up through this, and we, again, we you know, build an aggregation system so that they can easily see the results, the actual outcome-based results of their work. Um, 
and there, there are others as well. But they, but they, again, they prove the exceptions, prove the rule. We as a sector do not, uh, do not do this well, and we as technologists, I think, needs to, to sort of think about this in terms of where we go from management information systems to performance management to, to the next step. Should we stop it? I don't know. <laughs> There you go. There's the pain <laughs> of uh, technology. So the interoperability between Microsoft and Macintosh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so the thing that we wanted to just leave you with, and, and I think what we'd like to just do is, to the extent that you have questions, we'd, we'd like to, to, to talk about, you know, to start that conversation now. As far as, you know, in terms of sort of kicking that off, there are a couple of thoughts about you know how the different parts of our you know our ecosystem really sort of starts to make this happen. Um, we'll breeze through this quickly, yeah. and uh, and and then have a, a little bit of a discussion. So, um, nonprofit leaders. So, uh, this we, we talked a bunch of, about a bunch of technology, right? And we talked about a bunch of sort of a, tech, a data ecosystem. But the truth is that um, this doesn't happen in a nonprofit organization or any organization without leadership, governance, the board, the ED, the leaders of it driving this, right? So in my own organization, I make it an imperative that every single regularly standing meeting has a report that is generated automatically out of our information systems that's sent to all the participants in that meeting the night before so that people come with the data in hand that's relevant to that the decision making that we have in that meeting. And I think, you know, that's just one example of of what has to happen. Um, so nonprofit leaders have to really drive this within their own organizations and within their own uh, collaboratives. Um, IT staff have to really sort of think about this uh, and have a roadmap for this progression from management information systems which manage a particular domain of work to performance management systems which give you a view and the, the, the ability to, to understand efficiency across your organization and most importantly, then layer on top of that this idea of integrating your theory of change and your logic models of how you are actually getting to results, how the work you do turns into the results. Yeah. And I, I think it's important too that you know a lot of the people in this room are technologists and IT staff probably that in, that you you think about moving towards this model in your work, right? It's not sufficient anymore to just have an email marketing tool and have a Twitter strategy or whatever it is. We need to be thinking about building the systems that are gonna allow for outcomes tracking, right? So it's imperative that as technologists, we think about the platforms we're using, we think about the, the software and the tools, and that those tools have to be able to participate in an ecosystem like this. And if they don't, they're probably not worth using. Um, from a collaborative perspective, clearly, um, they're the ones that are gonna be chartered with creating and maintaining these real-time outcomes information systems. And the truth is that this is not a simple or, you know, it's, it's not a simple proposition. It's not inexpensive, and, it's, and, it, and it requires a lot of communication and discussion with the constituents within that, that organization. So there's a, there's, a, there's a lot, there's a premium on these collaboratives uh, to really not just think about this Often when, when, when these kinds of programs start, the idea is, uh, yeah, you know what, we're gonna hire an evaluation firm and they'll be part of our program and you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do a, uh, uh, an evaluation that measures how well the program's implemented and then five years down the road we'll do an outcomes evaluation. And in between, we'll just fly blind, right? That's not sufficient. We need real-time data tied into the real-time work uh, that informs and changes how we do our work day to day. Um, and then finally, you know, from a funder perspective, um, you know, Ford Foundation funded uh, uh, Cornerstone, Rockefeller was fi funding Iris and all these folks. That has to obviously continue, but there has to be a strong commitment to building that kind of a data infrastructure and paying for it because this is not something that just sort of organically emerges. Um, so, 
you know, there's, there, are, there are a ton of resources out there, right? But um, the one, I think, the one primer for an executive director is probably, you know, Mario Marino's book, Leap of, uh, uh, Leap of Reason. And it's, you know, this is all about outcomes thinking. There are uh, some really interesting books by um, Robert Penna on, you know, the practical aspects of how to build outcomes management systems and how to think about theories of change and outcomes management within your organization. There are the publications like Stanford Social Innovation Review and a bunch of, uh, uh, you know, blogs and consultancies that work on this. And then there is this whole kind of ecosystem of organizations that are nonprofit and for-profit consultancies around outcomes management that can help organizations think about theories of change and outcome and logic models and outcomes uh, outcomes uh, frameworks and and so those are just a starting point for where to turn to next. So um, there you go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, hold on one second. We have to get you a mic so that we can uh, get the question. The point was well taken about tools um, integrating with one another, but with due respect, um, some of the barriers to that are the software that some of the funding funders mandate using that don't, either don't allow you to get information out or don't play well with other tools. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you may be a nonprofit that has that vision, but there are a lot of barriers and a lot of duplication that makes it difficult even if your philosophy is to go in this direction. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, right? And this is not something that's gonna be solved tomorrow. And I think this is why we actually use this nomenclature of like collaborative, because the funders, the other organizations, this needs to be a collaboration between the funders in the sectors that you work in and the nonprofits. And it's imperative that we start to demand these kinds of things from the people who are creating those systems, right? In the past, we've been passive about this, and we said, great, you've got a system, we'll key in a second time all the data that you need, but I think we need to start pushing very hard against these folks and saying, look, this isn't gonna be effective. And, and I realize that many of us have been pushing back very hard, but the more that we can start to create viable alternatives and real case studies showing you know, instances where we create these ecosystems, that becomes, I think, more fuel and more ammunition to push back against these folks. Basically, the response has been when we push back is, well, if you don't use these tools, we're not going to fund you. Yeah, so yeah. you can only push back in the environment well, yeah. without losing and, your funding. And this is this is very true, right? So, and and uh, a very uh, germane example is we work with. Um, one of our sort of practice areas is around human services organizations. Mm -hmm. And you know, the most typical scenario you see there is uh, a multi-service direct service organization has you know, 15 different programs and probably you know, at least 15, but probably more like 30 so funding So you're familiar streams. with my agency. <laughs> and, yeah. and, the, and, the, and the further problem, and we're dealing with, it, with this with an organization in San Francisco right now. They have eight programs um, and they have probably 12 different funding streams and they are, they have, we just did the analysis, I think four or five um, government mandated systems, yes. right? And, and a bunch of others as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, and what that has done to that organization is that, is that over the years, it has basically created this kind of sense of complete powerlessness to actually manage its own theory of change and its own outcomes. So over the last two years, they've actually gone out and they've hired one of these consulting firms to help them think about their theory of change and the outcomes that they should be seeking, irregardless of, of funding streams, but it's undermined by the, the mandated systems. So now, right. you know, what's happening is, you know, we and they and a coalition of other uh, similar organizations that are, that are basically working with each of these funders are starting the conversation. So we, were just, we, were, we just met with the San Francisco Department of Public Health and we're trying to basically say, no, uh, we, don't we don't want to have to use this mandated avatar system in that case. What we want to do is use our own uh, electronic uh, client record system and send you the data. Let's integrate those things. And the response, of course, is predictable. It's, <laughs> it's uh, 
we haven't fit, figured out integration within the uh, San Francisco <laughs> uh, Department of Public Health yet, but we will in a couple of years. And so, so our strategy is we build the, you know, we, we do what we can. We build the performance management system within that agency. We build the outcomes management system within that agency. We work as well as we can and demonstrate through outcomes the, the, the efficacy of that kind of a system and we exert pressure. And then you start to work with other funders and exert more pressure in other organizations. And this is not a change. Uh, this is why I'm saying this is the next 10 or 20 years. This is not going to happen overnight. Right. But this is where we as a sector, as a technology sector, need to be focused. And one of the Excellent. bullets we actually cut from the funder slide was <laughs> funders need to ask their grantees about their own theory of change and logic models before they Posing dictate their, their own. own. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, any other questions, comments? Excellent. We only have time for um, one more, but great, Heather, please. Uh. <laughs> I thought he's pointing to you. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed what you said about uh, being more responsible about reporting back effectiveness outside of the, the organization. Um, but do you have any thoughts about establishing a, a rule of thumb about how much is appropriate? Because I could burn all 40 hours in the entire budget just on, on backtracking what I've done. Um, so how do you decide at a base level that? Uh, so, so, so can you rephrase the question? I'm, I'm, I just want to make sure that I have What's the appropriate amount of effectiveness yeah. tracking? In terms, of, in terms of outside of the organization? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, I think, uh, I think that, is the, that is the decision that, well, first of all, effectiveness, I think, um, is more of what's happening within the organization and within kind of your performance management systems. And there, you're actually tracking quite a bit of data. It, it, still, you have, there's the, there's the inclination, and you know, my staff will tell you this as well, that, <laughs> that sometimes you know, leaders ask for too much and sometimes ask for the wrong things, right? And over time, that becomes apparent, right? When you're measuring something and you're reporting on it in real time, but you're not actually acting on it, then you know that's too much. But when you start reporting outside of the organization, I mean, I think that is really driven by this dialogue between these, uh, between these sector kind of collaboratives and the individual organizations. Um, I would say in the Cornerstone Alliance, uh, uh, Cornerstone Partnership, there are 100 metrics that are being reported. And those are, those are a combination of actual you know, indicators, outcome indicators, and outcomes themselves. And um, the, the problem there is that it, it, it's, it's a pretty large number, but in order to do the calculations that give you sort of the, the key three or four benchmarks, which really talk about um, you know, the efficacy of uh, this intervention and the results that it's having for families, you know, you need to have that kind of data. I think that there might be other instances where it's really just four or five or six. Like I think, for instance, Promise Neighborhood uh, or um, Harlem Children's Zone, wow. I think that there are only, you know, uh, less than a dozen kind of uh, indicators that span across all types of organizations that are reporting up. And, I mean, I'm, I'm not... 100% positive on that, but I think that's that's the kind of well, order it, of magnitude. Harlem Children's Zone has basically said their one metric is kids graduating high school or uh, college, right? Yeah. They have they have subsumed everything else to that. Um, but I can guarantee you they're tracking many many more metrics to get to that. Right, right. Because they want to show what are what are the outcomes that lead to them graduating from college. Excellent. 